Hi, I'm the Rick in Rick Turns, and today I'm going to be making this ice cream cone Christmas ornament. Because, after all, nothing says Christmas like a summer treat. Who comes up with this stuff? These small ice cream cone Christmas ornaments are very easy to make. They obviously don't require much in the way of material. Let's take a look at my meticulously gathered research data to see what an ice cream cone Christmas ornament should actually look like. As you can see, I've spent hours and hours tracking down the ideal ice cream cone. After selecting these candidates for the prototype ornament, I proceeded to gather engineering data and then developed a number of different models for real-world stress testing. Based on materials failure data and wind tunnel testing, the classic Dairy Queen dipped cone shape has been selected as the ice cream cone Christmas ornament shape for 2014. Now let's go to the lathe and see how to turn it. This is the ice cream cone ornament that I'm going to be making. Now, uh, as with my other ornaments, it's very small, doesn't take up much material. I start off with a block of wood about like this. Uh, it needs to be at least three and a half inches long, I believe, for this ice cream cone. Uh, and uh, actually one inch on a side is sufficient. This is about one and a half. But I'll put that block between centers and bring it down to round to make something like this. This is actually a little bit longer. And turn a tenon on one end. All the turning is going to be done with this mounted in the chuck right there. No tail stock at all. All right. Uh, I've got a one inch skew chisel here. I'm going to be making planing cuts down the length of this to bring it back into round and true it up. Got the lathe set at about 1500 RPM. I've got a, a few tool marks right down on the end there where it was clamped uh, between centers. So I'm going to take those off first. As with my other Christmas ornaments, I made a template for this because I intend to make more than just a couple of them. <clears throat> this is the Christmas ornament. Total is about two and a half inches tall. You can see the dimensions there. And I'm just going to mark off the major cutting points here. That's what it's going to look like. I'm going to make a cut right at the bottom to establish the length. And now I'm going to use a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. I'm going to turn the, the top cone of ice cream first. This is probably a little bit long. Don't know for sure yet. That is a mark between the two uh, scoops of ice cream.
Now this of course is the top of the ornament and I'm gonna have to put a hanger right in there. So before I go any further, now that I've got the, uh, the top end established, I'm gonna drill a hole for the hanger to go in. I'm bringing up the tailstock. It's got a Jacobs chuck in it with my drill bit that's appropriately sized for the hangers that I put in. And it's about three quarters of an inch uh, deep that I'm going to be drilling, um, which is about what I need, a little bit more than what I need for the hanger to fit in there. Now I'm going to turn the uh, lowest uh, scoop of ice cream right here and this will be the cone all the way down here. Just looking at it, I think the top scoop of ice cream is a little bit too thick. I'm going to make it smaller. Now the cone down here is pretty much straight sides. It's got a lip here, a small bead right here, tapers all the way down. So I'm going to start working on it with a diamond parting tool. I don't normally do this. I'm going to use this skew as a scraper. I generally hate it when I see that in videos, but in this case I've got virtually nothing else that's going to get right in there that I need. It's looking pretty good. I think I need to make that uh, joint a little bit sharper. All right, that looks good. Now, we're already at the sanding stage. This is a pretty easy ornament once you've made one or two. I've actually gone through about seven different ice cream ornaments so far to come up uh, with the one that I really liked and one that really looks like an ice cream cone. Uh, this was the winner. Okay, I'm going to turn off the cameras uh, because I'm going to sand it 
That won't take long, and I'll be right back. And this is the last grit of sandpaper. This is 600 grit. I've sanded it with 180 and 240, 320, and 400. So now it's completely sanded. Now at this point, if I wanted to, I could put in some burn lines. For instance, here and here. I don't think I am. I'm going to leave it like this. Another thing I could do would be to, to burn the whole cap here and uh, make it into a chocolate dipped ice cream cone, but I'm going to leave it as is, I think, so I'm ready for the finish. The finish I'm using is uh, a friction polish, just like I've done on my other Christmas ornaments. It works extremely well. This is just made from shellac, uh, a little bit of alcohol to dilute the shellac, and then some boil linseed oil, about one to three oil to shellac. And it makes a really, really good friction polish. I've been quite pleased with it. So, as with all friction polishes, you put some on a rag or paper towel, and you need to coat the surface. And you need to actually put on as little polish as you can. Getting too much friction polish on doesn't work real well because it tends to gum up when you really start to polish it. It's also kind of hard to, to get right into these little corners here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, for the friction polish, you put the lathe on at high speed and you polish it with the rag that you applied the polish with. So I've got the lathe at 850. I'm going to turn it up to 2300 and polish it. You can see it instantly taking on a, a nice gloss shine. And my fingers are getting quite hot. That's the friction part. Yow. Okay. It doesn't really take a whole lot. That's a nice shine. All right, last thing I do is put on a coat of wax. This is carnauba wax. Um, there's plenty of ward turning waxes available. The only one I wouldn't recommend would be beeswax because I found it doesn't uh, doesn't give it a high shine. And I'm putting on a good bit of pressure here because just like with the friction polish, I want it to heat up, melt that wax. And that is completely finished in terms of finishing. And after I part it off, it will be completely finished in terms of turning. And there we have it. I'll take that nub off on the bottom, put a little of the polishing compound down here just to seal the wood. I'll screw in a hanger right on top. I make the hangers myself out of 16 gauge craft wire, but uh, if you don't want to fool with that, you can certainly buy a, a brass eye screw or something and put it right in there. And that's all there is. Mm-hmm. <laughs>